we walk down this little creepy trail, I'll tell you the story of my bus ride from Phoenix, Arizona to Northern Michigan. I guess the story really starts at um, Kalamazoo. The whole ride up until Kalamazoo is pretty normal, just late buses and layovers. When we reached Kalamazoo, things just started going wrong. I had a 19 hour layover in Kalamazoo. And when I got off the bus, I just decided to just lay down on the bench inside the bus station. I didn't realize that this bus station wasn't 24 hours. It closed at like 10 or 11 p.m. And I still had like 16 hours to go. So I kicked us all out. I had nowhere to go. So I just took one step out the door, dropped my suitcase, and just laid on the concrete. And then I realized I don't have my wallet. <laughs> I lost my wallet somewhere in Kalamazoo. I don't know if it dropped out of my pocket or I left it th somewhere, I don't know. But I no longer had my wallet. No ID, no money, like nothing. And after a couple hours of just laying there, some random guy walked past me and he's like, hey man, is everything all right? Are you okay? Do you need help? And then I just explained that I had a 19 hour layover. I'm just waiting for the bus station to open. He starts walking away, but then he stops. And he turns back to me and he asked, hey man, I have an apartment right down the road. I mean, it's just right there. If you want to come and crash out on the floor, better than sleeping on the concrete, then you could just wake up, go back to the bus station. Who in the right mind would ever agree to that? I am such an idiot. My first mistake. But I was cold, tired, I was sleeping on the ground. So I said, all right, sure start walking around the corner he asked to borrow my phone second weird sign you know granted we're still like on the side of the building but a little bit down the road i realized i don't have my cigarettes so i'm like i'm gonna go run back around the corner to grab my cigarettes second big mistake i left this random guy that i just met in the zoo with the only suitcase that had everything i owned in it and the only phone i had to contact anybody if anything went wrong. I was only gone for like a minute or two and when I came back around the corner after realizing my cigarettes weren't even there, the guy completely disappeared. I mean he was gone. He pulled a freaking Houdini on me. And I'm like yeah that makes sense. This, this makes sense. Like I'm an idiot. But my suitcase was still sitting there on the sidewalk. He didn't take that. Just ran off with my phone. Went and picked up my suitcase and went back in front of the bus station. Feeling defeated, I just laid there. And then I got stuck in my own head just thinking like, what am I doing? Like, like why am I here? Why am I doing this? This is crazy. I'm thousands of miles away from my family and my home. I'm by myself, so I call myself down because I was just thinking of that road that I was on in Arizona, like it wasn't good. I was screwing up my life. My friends and family saw that I was a different person and I just wasn't happy. I hated waking up every day. It was like that core unhappiness. So I just told myself like this is the only way, like I have no other options. My mom had kicked me out, this is it. This is the only way I'm going to better my life. I don't know if it, because I wasn't mentally strong enough to stay there and change, I just couldn't do it. actually pretty cool. The tree place. So after laying on the ground for a while, I remember that that same guy who ran off with my phone told me that there was a homeless shelter right across the street from the bus station. So I decided to go there. I laid down on the mat for like an hour, couldn't sleep, I was hungry and really tired but restless. So I didn't sleep and I just decided to leave and go right back out in front of the bus station. And I laid there until the sun came up. And when it did, I went back to the homeless shelter to eat breakfast, I was so hungry. And as I'm walking out, guess who I see? Freaking Houdini. 
the guy who ran off with my phone. I beeline straight for him. So as I reached him, he's just like, dude, where were you, man? I looked for you everywhere. Where'd you go? Oh. I said, man, just give me my phone back. I need that phone. It's important to me. All this and all that. And he handed me my phone back. Thankfully, I got it back, and I went to the bus station and waited for my bus. And then I got to thinking, this guy who invited me to sleep on the floor of his apartment is now at the homeless shelter. Like, I was just thinking, so many things were running through my head, like, what if I didn't turn back around the corner to go get my cigarettes? Like, what would have happened? He could have had somebody waiting down the street, and they would have, were gonna jump me. Or I could have been killed and stabbed and robbed. Like, any, anything could have happened. Like, my own stupidity got me out of my own stupidity. Man, I, I don't know. Like, who knows what would have happened? Still no wallet, no money. The story continues in Grand Rapids, Michigan. layover in Grand Rapids and it was one of those layovers where they just take the buses to go clean them so we left all of our belongings on that bus and at this time like I'm so hungry I haven't eaten in a while so my mom ends up ordering me a pizza and having it delivered to the bus station so I'm upstairs waiting for the pizza to come out I'm looking out the windows because I knew that it was cutting it really close to be back on that bus I finally see the Papa John's car pulling and I get out that door. I run, I grab my pizza, run back inside, start going down the stairs, and right when I turn around the corner, empty. <laughs> the whole place was empty. I missed my bus for a medium pepperoni pizza, along with everything that I owned. <laughs> like that suitcase had everything. I'm talking birth certificates, social security cards, my clothes, everything I brought with me. I couldn't pull another Kalamazoo night. I just couldn't do it. So I went to the front desk guy. I pretty much told him my whole life story. <laughs> he must have felt bad because they ended up putting me in a hotel for the night and I was delayed a day. By the time I reached my destination, which was Petoskey, Michigan, I literally had nothing. All I had was the clothes I was wearing. My suitcase was lost on the bus. My wallet, I don't even know what happened to my wallet, but I had nothing. I started my life over from scratch. I've met some incredible people out here that have helped me in so many ways. I've been living in Northern Michigan for like two years now, and if you're on the outside looking in, it might not seem like a lot has changed. I live in my boss's t-shirt store. I'm pretty much homeless. I don't have my own vehicle. I have to borrow a vehicle from a friend. But the most important thing has changed. And that's my mindset. I got my head straight out here. And if I didn't get my mind right, I wouldn't have been able to change. I, I wouldn't have been able to better myself. There's this quote that really, really has stuck with me. Most people often find their destiny on the road they took to avoid it. And that's so true, at least for me. I was in Arizona hating life, hating every single day, losing sight of who I was. I was a complete different person. And I knew what I had to do. I knew I couldn't stay there, but I kept avoiding it because it was a huge leap. It was a huge change. And there were so many times along the way where I was doubting it. I was thinking, this is a mistake. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, why am I here? I don't even know if this is gonna work. Who knows what's gonna happen? But I just put my head down and I kept going. And slowly but surely, I built myself back up. So as I'm reflecting, the only one regret that I have, I wouldn't take any of that back. I wouldn't redo anything. But my only one regret is not making this decision sooner. How much time I wasted just sitting around waiting for something to change. Just waiting for that day where I wake up and everything was fine. We all know that's not how it works. So one of my biggest takeaways from that whole experience is sometimes you have to take that big leap. I'm not saying everybody has to move thousands of miles away from everything, but sometimes those big life changes are the answer. And yes, I'm not afraid to admit that I was scared. It's scary. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just knew 
that this was the only way. I really, really appreciate you getting this far in the video. It truly means more than you know. I'm sorry if that was a really long story or if that was a really long video, but I don't know. I just had to, I had to tell it. And I hope that one person got something from this video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, peace out.